because we gotta join the uh, Hive Mind Collective YouTube, uh, please like our video, comment, and subscribe because uh, it gives us more notoriety and hopefully one day this all leads to more pennies in our pockets. Hopefully. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe, thank you, enjoy the video. Hey guys, your favorite host is back. And I had a random idea here, as I'm pacing in my room like I normally do, when I have nothing to do at all, and I'm just bored out of my fucking skull. I was thinking to myself, you know, in terms of, like, what I wish, like, certain games would have, like, mod support. I went back to Assassin's Creed 2, because I feel like it's one of those perfect games that don't deserve mods. But then I think to myself, boy, it'd be nice if it had a couple of extra upgrades from other games. Or, you know, upgrades I wish I could add myself to the game. And the one thing that came to mind was the weight system. Now, we all know about weight systems in games. Typically, something like Elden Ring or Dark Souls or even Fallout. Fallout outside of RPGs, the more weight's on you, you might get encumbered. If you're encumbered, oh, you can't fast travel, you can't move that quickly. You gotta, you know have the, the dilemma of a hoarder of, ooh, do I drop this tin can so I can go under 300 pounds, or I drop this flamer, do I drop this pre-war book that's worth, like, fucking five caps? You don't know what the fuck to do! But then you think about something similar to, say, Dark Souls, where, like, the more weight that's on you, the more encumbers your stamina, I guess? I don't know. I haven't played Dark Souls yet. I'm too much of a pussy. I should really start playing more Dark Souls games or Souls-like games. But anywho, I think about the weight system more of a fun aspect. I think of something like Mass Effect 3's weight system and how they did something with that. And to those that have never played Mass Effect 3 and don't know about its weight system, what it is is that um, you have a percentage bar varying from 50% to 200%. And I think how it went was... If it's at the lower spectrum, like 50% weight, you got a bonus to your cooldown meter. So your, your abilities cool down a whole lot quicker so you can use them more. But if it get, went into the higher ranges, between 100 to 200%, you'll be faced like a 25% or 50% increase in cooldown. So let's just take, you know, a drone rush, for example. And what happens is um, it's 6 seconds base. If I'm right, you have down to the 50% marker, goes down to 3 seconds. It's broken. It could be different, but who knows? It's been ages since I played Mass Effect 3. And I'll confess, I'm half tempted to buy the Legendary Edition on Steam, but the fucking cheapskate in me is saying, Wait! Be patient! You have more games in your library! But, if you go on the 200% spectrum, it goes up to like a 9 second cooldown, which, it's only a few seconds for something like a drone rush. It's nothing that bad. But if you're a soldier and you've played the soldier playthrough of Mass Effect, you know how broken a drone rush is. It's, it's chaotic fun. But I thought about the weight system, how it could be implemented in certain games. And the best game that comes to mind is Assassin's Creed 2. And I had this burst of an idea that I might as well record here right now. So let's just take you're the typical assassin and you're doing your missions. And you have... A fucking sword, dagger, hidden blades, three smoke bombs, five medicines, five fucking, you know, throwing knives, and a hundred thousand fucking florins. Shit that should fucking encumber you massively. Now, I know in some games, they don't care about the weight that money has on you. No doubt, you know, I'd reckon somebody like, you know, Michael or Trevor or Franklin from GTA Five, they have like ten million dollars on them. They should literally not be able to move at all. But it's gameplay convenience, you know? Like how there's no... How in some games there's no worry about gas for your cars. Or how you have 20 fucking magazines on you. It's not sticking out of your character. It's gameplay convenience. If there was that much realistic shit in the game, you'd be turned off by it. But this is where we gotta, like, interject some fun, meaningful shit. I'm the type of guy that wants a gameplay benefit for a particular feature. You know, the tangent right now, because this whole video is literally just a tangent here. Let's take Death Stranding, for example. As much as I love it, as, less, as much as I, you know, pray to, to Kojima here... Kojima is God! 
I will confess, I am pissed off there was no meaningful reward for five-starring a fucking, you know, a connection character. Besides, oh, you get a star in your leg and you get an inventory increase for the resources. I think it's really fucking stupid. There should have been a unique, exclusive recipe or a, a fucking level three or four item. Or a level four or level five item you could have gotten from completing that connection. But, oh well, it is what it is. But, um, there should be a meaningful reward for adding in this type of a gameplay hurdle. For example, the weight system. How I imagine it being implemented with something like Assassin's Creed 2 is, for example, the money. 100,000 florins is a fuck ton. There should be a risk-reward system. Let's just say if you have very little money on you. Like, say they add in the ability that you can go to an Assassin's safe house and drop off all of your money. Safely secure it. So if you die, you won't lose that much. I know some mods add something like that in, like, say, GTA 4, where you can deposit your money in a bank account so you don't lose it. Kind of fucking cool. It's a decent mod. Something also similar with weapons and ammo, how there's a duffel bag, and how if you have a shit ton of weapons on you or ammo or money, it'll actually slow down your fucking movement speed. That's actually fucking cool. And I think it also added, like, a sprint ability where you run even faster than normal, but it's dependent on, you know, like, how much shit's on you. But in that, you know, realm of possibility of modding, it'd be nice in the case of Assassin's Creed 2, you can deposit your money, and there's like, a, there's, like, a weight system, like, a bar or a gauge. And everything contributes to it between the amount of fucking, you know, weapons you have on you, the amount of utility items, everything. And what happens is, let's just say you have too much money on you. 100,000 florins. The benefit is, okay, cool, you don't have to worry about going back and forth to doing, you know, like, having to drop your money off. You have it on you at all times. You can go and buy shit whenever you want without having to worry about, you know, picking it up from a bank or whatever. But the con is, thieves will notice you have some big fucking purses on you. And they'll try and rob you more. But it can also have the, you know, opposite effect or, like, the, the benefit of, hey, drawing out these thieves on you and they'll keep robbing you. They'll be a fucking minor inconvenience. But if you can kill them, you can also take their riches, their couple of extra thousand florins they pickpocket off of people. So you can draw them out to get some extra money. But let's think about the opposite effect. If you decide to put all of your money into a safe safe, Okay, if you get wounded or knocked out, you won't lose any money, obviously, and you'll have extra options from there. This just came to mind. You can choose to either put it into a assassin safe house. Okay, it's permanently safe. You don't have to worry about anybody taking it from you because you're the master assassin. They're not going to fuck with Ezio, the master assassin. But you put it into a bank. Maybe by putting it into a bank, you can get interest. If interest was a thing back then in the 1500s, Renaissance, Italy, but whatever, you can do that. But then maybe there's the extra added side effect of, okay, there's too much money into a bank. Maybe some thieves will get wise and try robbing it, and then you'll have to fucking rob that money back. And again, you'll have the, you know, added effect of, hey, you could try robbing it back from and get a little bit of extra on the side. But beyond that, there's other shit, you know? You have less weapons on you, maybe collectively, like, you keep lowering the weight system. Like, obviously, they'll have the, the negative effect of, okay, if you have less potions on you, you can't heal yourself as well. You have less throwing, you know, throwing knives on you, you'll have less ranged ammo. You have less weapons on you, guess what? Less weapons, you won't be able to adapt to certain diff like, different combat scenarios. But, but, what will happen is, okay... Less weight on you, you can move quicker. You'll make less noise. You'll be more agile in combat, so maybe it'll be easier to pull off counterattacks or, you know, um, parries. Maybe um, you'll be able to climb quicker since there's less weight on you. You'll be able to pull off more exotic and stylish moves. Maybe there'll be, like, a hidden effect where you'll have a better chance of automatically dodging an attack or taking half damage or some shit. Especially with armor. Like, the less armor you have on you, you can bait people. Because obviously I had this idea in my head where if you have less weapons on you and less armor, you'll look like a civilian. Guards will second-guess you. And they'll be like, ha! 
this guy's a peasant, we can take him on. But then you have a hidden blade up on your fucking wrist, and you just take out, like, three enemies in less than ten seconds, it'll, like, increase a special meter effect where it'll scare the piss out of these guards a whole lot easier, so more will run off from you. The fear effect, something that was in fucking Brotherhood with the dagger Brutus, where it instills fear in your enemies a whole lot quicker when you kill them without getting hit. The same effect could have been added as a mod or system in an Assassin's Creed game, where you can look very innocent, civilian-like, not so intimidating, you can scare people away. But then you can have the adverse effect, that was the word I'm trying to find, where you're decked out in the heaviest armor, you have a broadsword, you're decked out to the teeth, people may not want to fucking initiate combat with you at first, but you will have, like, the disadvantage of not being able to dodge as easily. You'll be slow. You'll have heavier breathing. Just extra fucking systems that could be semi-interesting. I mean, that's just me, though. Me, I'm more of the agile guy that wants to stick to one weapon and just be very lightweight. I think ever since I played, uh, fucking Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, I was introduced to the whole idea of speed and agility. And ever since, like, any game that, like, says... Oh, you get a 20% increase in movement by wearing no armor. I'm like, I want that game! So I just thought to myself, man, it'd be nice if there was like some sort of system like that in Assassin's Creed 2. Where, oh, what if? You actually had the ability to take off your weapons and armor as opposed to like trying to find some cheeky solutions. Like, okay, I don't want a sword or dagger on me. I want to do, use nothing but a hidden blade for the whole game. Oh, I literally have to let a fucking brute disarm me. Oh, I don't want to wear any armor at all. I have to just sell the fact that I have to get at least one piece of armor. But it'd be nice if there was more options like that in the game. The option to go in with barely fucking nothing for a fucking huge challenge. But still compensate us in some way for going that particular play style. In terms of like, you know, being lightweight, not having much on you. But fooling the enemy in a way. But also making a little bit more sly and slippery. I don't know. I guess I, I like the more... Uh, I guess I like the characters that don't look that imposing, but can definitely fuck your shit up. You know, something like... Um, to, to, to the youngsters here that may not know about it, the thing that comes to mind is... Um, the fuck was that guy's name? Uh, Jet Li. In the famous DMX film, Cradle to the Grave... You know, you, you just see, like, a tiny Asian man in a leather jacket. He doesn't look that imposing. He takes down, like, fucking ten buffed fucking steroids du steroid dudes down in less than a minute. It's, like, that whole, like, scrawny, tiny, defenseless man thing that suddenly turns into a fucking agile badass with these kung fu moves. It's kind of fucking cool. I wish I could see more of that in some games. Where you could still be the bulky dude, or you could be like a civilian looking like guy with a few tricks up his sleeve that could definitely cause as much or greater damage. But beyond that, I, I I guess it just goes back to the whole idea of, you know, I wish, you know, some gameplay shit would just offer you benefits to picking that particular play style other than, oh, self-imposed challenge, but... I just wanted to record this real quick as a extra video to give to my co-host because, you know, I probably have like a few videos right now he's going to love, you know, modifying here. But also, um, I feel like I start saying this now, even though I'm basically joining the band camp of YouTubers here. Uh, one second here, I, I wrote something down here for you guys to hear as a closing thing because I don't think I have anything else to say here. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> If you like the video and the content you, you got to hear here, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Because it'll get us pennies in our pockets. Someday. But, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, who knows, maybe it's going to be like a one-shot, you know, side content of the side content of the side content. Where I just talk about what-ifs. For, like, what if a particular gameplay mechanic was introduced in a game to spice it up or add more, uh, you know, features and content to a game. But that's all I wanted to say for now. Stay safe, guys. Uh, yeah.
fuck. <laughs>